This is the Biblical Unitarian Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Biblical Unitarian Podcast. This is episode number 79 entitled, How Did the Spirit-Inspired Jesus Become the Giver of the Spirit? The Biblical Unitarian Podcast is the podcast that aims to start conversations about the oneness and unity of God and about the humanity of Jesus. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Dustin Smith. As always, I am your host. If you are a regular listener, thank you so much for supporting the podcast. We appreciate you being here. And if you are new to the podcast, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of our episodes. It is important to note the difference between the measure with which Jesus is empowered prior to his resurrection and after his resurrection. Too often, within discussions about Christology and who Jesus is, there is a mixing together of Jesus' post-resurrection empowerments from God, having received all authority in heaven and on earth, with Jesus' empowerments possessed in his earthly ministry. In studying the Holy Spirit, we noted that within the Old Testament, it was God's personal and powerful presence working in the lives of his people. We also observed in our previous episode that the manner in which Jesus interacted with the Holy Spirit was likened unto a prophet, that is, a spokesman for God who speaks authoritatively under the Spirit's influence and empowerment. But the question we want to answer today is, how did the Spirit-inspired human Jesus become the giver of the Spirit after his resurrection? In other words, how is it that Jesus, who received the Holy Spirit from God during his earthly ministry, began to be described as the one who gives the Holy Spirit to the people of God. For this study, we will limit our focus to the four canonical Gospels and the Book of Acts, as I want to do a separate episode on Paul's theology of the Spirit sometime in the future. So, without further ado, let's begin our investigation into how Jesus became the giver of the Spirit. Our first point today is that Jesus the formerly inspired, now gives the Spirit. Prior to the resurrection, Jesus already hinted that he would be the one who empowers his followers, according to the Gospel of Luke. Since this theology was held by Luke, we could also be sure to look for it in the book of Acts for a similar understanding. Let's look at this passage in Luke chapter 21, starting in verse 14. Jesus says to his followers, So make up your minds not to prepare beforehand to defend yourselves, for I will give you utterance and wisdom, which none of your opponents will be able to resist or refute. That's Luke chapter 21, verses 14 through 15, where Jesus indicates that he will be the person who at some time in the future, will empower his followers with wisdom and utterance with which to speak to their opponents. We can actually see after the resurrection in the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verse 22, that Jesus says much of the same. This passage reads, And when Jesus had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. John chapter 20, verse 22. Here Jesus is giving the Holy Spirit to his followers after his resurrection. So we can see there that Jesus very clearly is the one that gives the Holy Spirit to his followers after the resurrection. Our second point today is looking at Jesus' promises to send the Comforter and the Paraclete. There is a Greek noun, Paraclete, that gets translated as the Helper or Comforter, in John's Gospel. In John chapter 7, we begin to see Jesus making this promise. John chapter 7, verse 39 says, But this he spoke of the Spirit, which those who believed in him were to receive, for the Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. 
John chapter 7, verse 39. Again, very clearly, the giving of the Spirit to those who believed in him was to be given after Jesus was glorified. That means after his death, resurrection, and exaltation. In John chapter 15, Jesus speaks more about this. Jesus says in John 15, 26, When the Helper comes, which I will send to you from the Father, that is, the Spirit of truth that proceeds from the Father, it will testify about me. John chapter 15, verse 26. We get a little bit more information in this particular passage. Jesus says that he will send the Spirit of truth. He also says that the Spirit of truth comes from the Father, indicating that it originates with the Father. And we also see that it proceeds forth from the Father. This Spirit will testify about Jesus. So it doesn't proceed forth from the Son. It proceeds forth from the Father. But Jesus sends this from the Father. So it's a little more nuancing that needs to take place when we say that Jesus sends the Spirit because Jesus sends it from the Father and the Spirit proceeds forth from the Father. Of course, Jesus giving the Spirit was predicted by John the Baptist. And this prediction is actually recorded in all four of our gospel accounts. We can look at the passage in Matthew chapter 3, verse 11, which is paralleled in Luke 3.16. John the Baptist said, As for me, I baptize you with water for repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, and I am not fit to remove his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Again, that's Matthew 3, verse 11, and the parallel passage is in Luke 3, verse 16. Mark's version in Mark chapter 1, and verse 8 says, I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Again, that's Mark 1, verse 8. And in John's gospel, we have much of the same. John chapter 1, verse 33, John the Baptist says, I did not recognize him, but he who sent me to baptize in water said to me, he upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining upon him, this is the one who baptizes in the Holy Spirit. John 1, verse 33. So it's very clear that Jesus is certainly the one predicted to send the Spirit, but the sender of the Spirit is someone who receives the Spirit from the Father. And that, of course, leads to our third point today, which is the promised Holy Spirit ultimately comes from God, not from Jesus. We can actually see some very clear and open statements about this in the book of Acts. In Acts chapter 15 and verse 8, it says, And God, who knows the heart, testified to them by giving them the Holy Spirit, just as he also did to us. Acts 15 verse 8. Very clearly there, God is the one who gave the disciples, the Holy Spirit. God there is the giver. You can also see this in the first primary speech in the book of Acts, spoken by Peter in Acts chapter 2 and verse 33, where he says, Therefore, having been exalted to the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured forth this which you both see and hear. Acts 2, verse 33, where Peter says very clearly that Jesus has been exalted to the right hand of God, the Father, and Jesus received from the Father the Holy Spirit. Now Jesus pours this Spirit out for the disciples to see and witness. But Jesus received the Spirit from the Father. It's the Father's Spirit. And Jesus received this after his exaltation to God's right hand. So Jesus does give the Spirit, but the Spirit ultimately comes from the Father. And this is actually a point that Jesus himself makes in John's Gospel. In John chapter 14, starting in verse 16, Jesus says, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, that it may be with you forever, that is, the Spirit of truth. John chapter 14, verses 16 through 17. Again, here, Jesus is asking the Father, and the Father is giving the disciples the spirit of truth. 
Jesus is involved in this process. He is requesting this of the Father, but ultimately the Father is the giver of the Spirit. Much of the same can be found later in verse 26 of chapter 14. Jesus says, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, which the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. John 14, verse 26. Here again, we get some helpful information. The Father sends the Holy Spirit, but the Father sends it in Jesus' name. So Jesus functions as an intermediary in the sending of the Spirit, but the Father is the ultimate sender of the Holy Spirit. We can also see similar comments in John 15, verse 26. Jesus says, When the Helper comes which I will send to you from the Father. That is, the spirit of truth that proceeds from the Father, it will testify about me. That again is John 15, verse 26. This is something that Jesus sends, but Jesus sends from the Father. It is the spirit of truth, and it proceeds forth from the Father. There are a few other references which corroborate this particular suggestion if these particular references are reflecting the divine passive. For our listeners, if you're not familiar with what the divine passive is, the divine passive is a tense of the verb form in the passive voice, which typically is used when God is the subject, but the writer wants to not speak about God in the sense of respect for God, so they will use the divine passive. Look at this particular passage, Acts chapter 1 and verse 5. This might be a reflection of the divine passive. It says, For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Acts 1 verse 5. You can see there that the way the verb is used, you will be baptized, there in the passive, is possibly the divine passive, meaning God is the one that's going to baptize with the Holy Spirit, and Jesus would be involved in some sense. We can also see something similar in Acts 11, verse 16, where it says, And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he used to say, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Again, we have the passive there, very likely the divine passive, you will be baptized, indicating God ultimately is the giver of the Spirit. In conclusion, we have observed that the manner in which Jesus, the anointed one with the Holy Spirit, became the giver of the Holy Spirit is pretty straightforward. First, we noted that the Gospel of Luke and the Gospel of John both indicate that Jesus would become the giver of the Holy Spirit, with the Gospel of John explicitly stating that this occurred after his resurrection. Furthermore, the fourth gospel repeatedly indicates that Jesus would send the Spirit, namely the Spirit that proceeds forth from the Father. This confirmed the remark by John the Baptist, which was recorded in all four gospels, that Jesus would baptize with the Holy Spirit. However, Jesus and the early Christian preaching recorded in the book of Acts report that God the Father is the ultimate source of the Holy Spirit. Jesus asked of the Father, and the Father sent the Spirit. The Father sends the Spirit in the name of Jesus. Jesus functions, therefore, as an intermediary when it comes to the giving of the Spirit. The Spirit originates with the Father, and it is sent through the risen and exalted Jesus. Therefore, the answer to the question, how did Jesus, the anointed one with the Spirit, become the giver of the Holy Spirit, appears to be that God gave the Spirit to the risen Jesus, and now Jesus gives the Father's Spirit to his followers. In other words, Jesus gives the Spirit because he was first given the Spirit by the Father. If you enjoy the Biblical Unitarian Podcast, 
please consider supporting us. You can check out this episode's description for a PayPal link. Thank you again so much for listening to us and supporting the podcast. Again, my name is Dustin Smith. Until next time, you folks take care.